So a couple of years ago, I made a video for people who were just getting started in winging. In that video, I promised to make another video about aerodynamics. I haven't done it yet because I wanted to do some really cool graphics and animations to explain some of these concepts, but making really cool graphics and animations takes time. And I like to spend my time windsurfing or making money so that I can pay bills and buy my wife things she likes so that when a package shows up at the door from North Beach Windsurfing or Ocean Air, she doesn't get too upset. But I really wanted to make this video and get it out there. So we're just gonna slap this thing together. I have some old footage laying around that I can use. I've got an old PowerPoint presentation on aerodynamics that I used for something else. And we've got some visual aids. We've got Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger, a couple balsa wood airplanes. We've got this cool old Barbie car that my wife made with her dad when she was little. And just in case, we've even got Smurf on a windsurfer. So who needs to watch this video? Who needs to know this information? Nobody, nobody does. But if you windsurf or you wing foil or you sail a sailboat, this might be interesting. It might be useful in some situations to help you figure out what's going on. Also keep in mind that I am just some random goofball on the internet. Anything I show you or tell you in this video could be completely wrong. So in this video, or probably series of short videos, we're gonna talk about aerodynamics, some of the science behind how a wing works and why we care about that if we're windsurfing or winging or sailing a boat. We're gonna talk about the wind and how to understand it and how to use that knowledge to your advantage. And that's what we're gonna focus on, how to really use this information, what you're gonna experience when you're out there on the water or skating with your wing or whatever it is you're doing. We're gonna start by talking about airplanes and how an airplane wing works. And then we'll explain why we care about that if we're windsurfing or sailing a boat or whatever. If you look at an airplane wing from the side, you'll notice it has a kind of a squashed teardrop shape. It's thicker in the front, thinner in the back, usually flatter on the bottom and more curved on top. We call this shape an airfoil. As an airplane starts rolling down the runway, air will start flowing past its wings. It's kind of like if you're driving and stick your hand out the window of a car, or if you were driving in a Barbie car with no windshield and no roof. You would feel the air flowing by you as you drive down the road. So we have this air flowing over the wings of the plane, created by the movement of the plane through the air. And that air flow over the airfoil shape creates a force called lift. And that force is what lifts the airplane up into the air. So why are we spending all this time talking about airplane wings? Well, here's why. If you take a wing from an airplane and break it off and you stick it on a boat, it becomes a sail. An airplane wing normally has a distinct top skin and a distinct bottom skin and some amount of thickness to it. That's because this teardrop airfoil shape is particularly good at creating lift. Also, you can adjust and manipulate this shape in a lot of interesting ways to make a wing perform exactly the way you want it to. But a lot of different shapes can create lift. Even a flat piece of wood can create lift. That's exactly the kind of wing that our little balsa wood airplane has, a flat piece of wood. So you can definitely take a single skin and make it into a shape like the top surface of an airfoil and use that to create lift. That's exactly what you see if you look at a hand wing, sup wing, wing foil wing, whatever you want to call that thing. It's a single skin of fabric curved into an airfoil shape creating lift. It's also useful to know that a wing can create lift in any direction relative to the ground. So if you bank or tilt an airplane over on its side, the wing is now gonna create lift in a horizontal direction, sideways relative to the ground. In fact, this is how you turn an airplane. You bank or tilt one wing down, and the lift from the wings pulls the plane in a horizontal direction, making it turn. This is much more noticeable if you watch like a fighter plane or an aerobatic plane turn. 
So again, the important thing to remember here is that a wing can create lift in any direction relative to the ground, up, down, or sideways. It's really what a sail is. It's a wing that's been tipped up on its side and stuck on a boat. In fact, if you look at some of the fancy high-tech racing boats that have been used in recent years, a lot of them have a rigid mainsail. It's a rigid sail, very much like the wing of an airplane. You'll still see this curved airfoil shape when you look at a more traditional fabric sail. You'll see it on both the main sail and on a head sail like a jib or Genoa. And you'll see an airfoil shape on a windsurfing sail, either a cambered sail or a non-cambered sail. While we're at it, let's talk about foiling. Foil is short for hydrofoil, water wing. It's a wing that's designed to create lift underwater. If you were to look closely at a foil, especially the front wing, you would notice that same teardrop wing shape that we've been talking about. If you were to look at a fin for a windsurfing board, you would also see that hydrofoil shape. You'd also see it if you look at a dagger board or center board for a windsurfing board or for a sailboat, or if you look at the keel on a bigger boat. So far, we've talked about lift being created when a wing moves through the air. This is why airplanes have engines. The movement through the air creates that airflow that generates lift. But that airflow can also be created by the wind moving across the ground, even with the plane sitting still. This is why small planes get tied down when they're parked. If the plane isn't tied down and a big gust of wind comes up, the wings can create lift and bad things happen. But that wind moving across the ground or moving across the water and creating lift in our sails is what allows us to first start moving when we're windsurfing or sailing or winging. If you're wondering exactly how a wing creates lift, there are a few different explanations for that. One of the most popular explanations is based on Bernoulli's principle. According to this explanation, as the air flows over the wing, the wing creates a difference in air pressure. So it creates lower pressure above the wing. The pressure below the wing will be higher. And this difference in pressure creates lift. You can imagine a giant vacuum cleaner creating an area of low pressure above a wing, lifting it up. Another explanation is based on Newton's laws of motion. So according to this explanation, as the air flows over the wing, the wing bends or deflects the air downward. We sometimes call that downward deflection, downwash. According to Newton's third law of motion, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. If you drive your car into a tree, the action of your car hitting the tree creates a force on the tree and that may knock the tree over. But at the exact same moment, the tree is gonna create an equal and opposite force on your car, which is likely to bend or break the front of your car. As a wing creates a force on the air, deflecting it downward, creating that downwash, the air will create an equal and opposite force pushing up on the wing, and that's what we call lift. If you want an even simpler explanation, you could imagine that the air molecules are like ping pong balls hitting the bottom of the wing. And as those ping pong balls get deflected off the bottom of the wing, they create an upward force of lift, lifting the wing. So here's the deal. Each of those explanations, the Newtonian explanation, Bernoulli's principle, the ping pong ball explanation, each one of those is a very simplified and incomplete explanation for how a wing creates lift. Now, if you're just looking for a simple explanation, hey, I just want a simple explanation so I understand how a wing works, how my sail works, how my hydrofoil works. Any one of those is great. You can use whichever one you like. You can use whichever one makes more sense to you. But we start getting into trouble when we start treating any of those as if it's more than just a very simplified explanation. You'll hear people say, no, the Bernoulli explanation is totally wrong. That's not what's happening. It's actually the ping pong balls. You can do some really cool, like middle school science class type experiments to demonstrate how lift is created. And those are really cool. And again, they can give you just a very general idea of how this works. When we start drawing too many conclusions, from these very simplified explanations, 
or from these very cool tabletop science class experiments. When we start drawing too many conclusions from those, our conclusions start drifting very far away from reality and from what we actually observe when a wing is flying or when we're sailing or when we're wing foiling. Okay, let's stick this thing back together and see how it works. You ready? That was pretty good. So if any of these explanations, the Bernoulli principle, the Newtonian explanation, the ping pong ball explanation, if any of one of those makes sense to you and you're saying, all right, like I can picture that. I can visualize now what my sail is doing or what my wing is doing or what my foil is doing. That's great. That's exactly what we want. Just a basic explanation that helps you picture what's going on. We should just be really cautious about doing anything more than that with any of these simplified explanations. Hi, Bug. Do you want to be in the video? It really is helpful to visualize and think of your wing or your sail as creating lift and pulling you through the water. If that is your takeaway from this video, that's perfect. So if this video was helpful, please remember to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. If you're looking for a leadership coach or executive coach, or someone to help you with time management, let me know, because that's how I pay for my windsurfing addiction. Check out my website, scottmillercoaching.com, and I hope to see you out in the water sometime.